Hello, 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 good afternoon, good evening, good morning, everyone, wherever you are, greetings from my side to your side. I'm back again today, Pastor Rose, Mary James, to share the gospel of Christ. How is everyone doing today? As for me, on my side and my family, we are thankful, we are grateful for the grace of God upon our lives. We are thankful and we appreciate God for still making us live among the living. And I believe that wherever you find yourself, I believe that all is well. So I'm again today, Saturday, first day of April 23. We thank God for this day. We thank God that God brought us to a new day, a new life, new opportunity. Some people is going to two, the second day of April. So we thank God because the grace of God is sufficient for us and is able, and is able to do all, above all, what we think or ask for. So I am grateful today because I'm able to make this day to the glory of God. So thank, thank God for all he has done in our lives and the lives of our loved ones. We cannot take anything for granted. We just want to appreciate God for his goodness upon our lives. And we just want to appreciate him for all he has done. So today we are going to speak on the solid foundation. How to have a solid, solid foundation on your life in the things of God how you can have a full, solid foundation. So I just want to appreciate all those who, are, who have been stopping by in this forum. I want to be thankful. I want to appreciate you all. Your coming will not go in vain. I thank God every day for your lives and I pray for you and your family daily. I appreciate you all for coming every day to stop by. The body of Christ is not one. The body of Christ consists of every one of us our attention, our eyes, our mouth, our body, our time, our resources and everything. It's about the body of Christ. So we are grateful because we are able, I'm able to sit here today and without you guys listening or coming to visit the forum, there is no body of Christ only. But because of you guys' support towards this forum, I'm thankful, I'm grateful. So today we are going to look into a very deep topic and we'll see a lot of Bible verses that we can relate to ourselves and how can we stand on a solid foundation in the things of God? How can we make our life about the things of God? So I'm grateful and thankful for everyone today. So you guys already know the normal routine. Before we start, we want to praise. God loves praises, he loves prayer, he loves thanksgiving. So let's praise. You don't mind the voice, but what is in the voice? I'm thankful for everyone. Thank you, everyone, for stopping by. So you guys already know my favorite. I cannot go beyond, but I'll try my best to sing so that everybody will be able to join me wherever you are. It was like unto thee. To thee, oh Lord, among the gods, who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders, hallelujah. Who is like unto thee? Oh, oh, oh Lord, who is like unto thee? Oh, oh, oh Lord, amongst the gods, who is like thee? Glorious in holiness, fearful in praises. Do wonders, hallelujah, who is like unto thee, oh Lord, who 
to thee, O Lord, among the gods, who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, though a wonders, alleluia. It is well, it is well, with my soul, with my soul, it is well, it is well, with my soul. Your name is Yahweh, your name is Yahweh, you are the miracle working God, your name is Yahweh, do something new in our life, something new in our life. Something new in our life. Oh, Lord, do something new. Do something new in our life. Something new in our life. Something new in our life. Oh, Lord, I cannot live. I cannot live without you, Lord. I cannot live without you, Lord. I cannot live without you, Lord. Oh, 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 Lord, we give you glory, Lord. As I honor you, we give you glory, Lord. As I honor you. You are wonderful, you are worthy, O oh Lord, you are wonderful, you are worthy, O oh Lord. Father Lord, we thank you for today. I give all glory to your name as I honor you. Lord, come and have your way. Come and bless me today exceedingly, abundantly, above all. I thank you for this forum, Lord. I thank you for all those who have joined today and those who are unable to join, Lord. Bless them wherever they are. As we have come as a group, Lord, bless us individually according to the riches of your glory. Look into our heart, Lord, and bless us. I thank you, Lord, for the beginning of this month, April 1st, that, Lord, you will bless this month for us according to the riches of your glory. Look into our heart. Lord, I commit the servant of God into your hands that your word is about to be preached, Lord. Come and dwell among us. Come and use the servant of God mightily to the glory of your name. Father, Lord, I thank you for today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we are going to discuss on the solid foundation of God. So, um... So we're going to look So we are looking into 
what life has for us. So we are looking on how you build your foundation on God's word. So um, we already know first and foremost, you can only build your foundation in the things of God. And we have many, many aspects and we have many things that we can look into. How we can be able to build a strong foundation in the, in the, in the things of God. So good afternoon, Edwin. Thanks for stopping by. God bless you as you have joined today. So how can we build a strong foundation while we, we, we are living a life? This is a life because all of us can live a life. Maybe you are living a life, you go to work, you come from work, you do many other things besides the things of God. How can we able to build strong foundation? People that maybe, we have people in different, different, Places you go, you come to America, you go to London, UK, you go to um, um, maybe different places, you go to Greece, you go to um, let me say Western world or Europe in general, Germany, all these areas. Some areas you f you find out that the way the way they live life, like twenty four hours, some areas like Canada. They will tell you their shift is 8 to 4, 4 to 12. They don't do like double shift. While you see America, some people work, it's like 24 hour shift throughout the world. You go UK, they have something different like Canada. You go all around, it might be different. But how can we able to build foundation on God's word? How can we, if you you work so hard, you might, you might be by yourself. You might be taking care of your family. How can you balance the things of life and the things of God? How can you able to build that foundation, that strong foundation? While you are working, you have to take care of your family. You have to take care of yourself. You have to take care of the husband, the children. You have to go to work. You have to come again at the same time. And I'm doing it. I do all this multi-tax. I work. I'm a pastor. I have my own personal life that I live. I take care of home. I take care of my husband, I cook, I fix the home, I clean, I do everything, 24 hours. I will get up early in the morning, 5 a.m. pray, after pray, I'm working. When I get up in the morning after my 5 a.m. pray, after my devotion, I start my day. Go out for a walk, long walk. I will go and walk, after long walk, come home, showered, I start my day. Walk, after walk, within that time frame, I will come home, prepare dinner, after dinner, I have to do my, have other Bible, religious things that I do after that. You'll, you'll be thinking, how do you do all that? Tuesday, go to work, start the day again, 5 a.m., pray after prayer. You start the day again, go out for work, come back, long work, because these things clear our mind at times. Because when you are so much in multi doing so many other things, you have to do other things to pipe you up to start your day like a strong energy because we go back and forth so i have to go again in the morning tuesday go for work come home shower go for work after work come home ready for for dinner after that boom bible study wednesday same thing fasting within that time you go for a walk come back home after then you start the day go how can you build your life in the things of god when you have so much you have to take care of the home take care of chi, chi, your children take care of the home take care how can we so we can look you say we trust the lord and know that the promise of god are sure so we need to abide one number one we need to abide in god's word so you can't just get up in the morning to build a, a strong foundation in the things of god number one you have to have the habit of getting up in the morning and pray I do my 12 midnight before I go to bed. I will not pray. I will not sleep without praying. No matter how tired I am, I have to be in his presence. If you I don't take all night, uh, at least I have to take 10, 15 minutes, speak to him, share his word, pray. Then I will lay down sleep. If I'm not tired, I will still stand for some couple of minutes, pray. Then I lay down. 5 a.m., I have to get up to pray. So the, the first foundation you want to start, 
you start with pray. Once you can tackle that, because the devil can die our spirit. At times, some people lay down, they don't pray. You know, how the devil can 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 really take us within their within his palm is to put us to work. Work double. Work double. When you are working double every day, you come home, you are yawning, you are very tired. All you're thinking of is to take shower or maybe eat something or maybe you don't even have time to eat something because you are working so hard, you lay down sleep. The Bible tells us money is evil. And when we talk in terms of money is evil, not only to eat it, but even what the money make us do. It is the work of all evil in our life, money. Some people have money. They do surgery, plastic surgery to make themselves beautiful. So this same money is using us to do many, many wrong things at the wrong time. This same Bible makes us to understand that money is the root of all evil. And when they talk the root of all evil, inclusive, when people don't make time for God, but they make time for money. And this same money is what we're going to live here and go. So we have to remember that everything we will do, money is what disturbs everything in our life. I have to go to work. I have to do double. I have to do this. So apply God's word first. When you wake up, the first thing we need to abide in his word. Make sure you pray. Don't leave your home without praying. You don't know how prayer is powerful until when you start doing it and you start seeing things changing in your life. You start seeing how your family life is changing. You start seeing how foundational causes broken. You start seeing how things that you have been longing for years start manifesting. Then you will know prayer is important in our lives. So in the morning when you wake up, first you think of is to worship if we can take 16 hours to do to work do double to make that money just take 30 minutes of your time he's not asking for too much take 30 minutes of your time in his presence worship you worship him praise him and read maybe a line of verse you lay down sleep at least you have committed your life He's taking care of you daily, all day, morning. He's taking care of you. He's doing many things in our lives. All we can do is to repay him back by letting him know we care about him. By calling upon him, by worshipping him. He's not asking for too much. But once he notices that you are making time for him, he's going to make time for you as well. God is running away from the unrighteous, those who don't care about him, but he's always there for the righteous ones. And don't tell me because God did not answer the prayer that you asked for yesterday, what you asked for, meaning God is not looking to you. Even sustaining you every day, giving you what to eat, to wear, it might not be abundant, but because of the effort that you don't struggle, maybe you are blessed by a different way. God make us uniquely in our lives. God make our... God created us uniquely and our lives are created in a different ways. You don't have to be the way I am. I might be able to stand to walk. Some people, God created them, you walk so much, but others are eating. That don't mean because others are eating, meaning that's how, that's how your life should be. But that's how God wants it. He said, I will create you to walk, but you have to share with others. While God creates others, they will get, but they have to end from others. That's just about life. So we have to come to the fact that God walk in his own way in our lives. If we are just living and trying not to, we said, if God said, okay, when you have, it's yours. You don't care about anyone. The world will be a selfish place for everyone of us to live. But God decided to create some that cannot be afforded. They cannot afford a meal or what to wear. Then God created others. He said, you have to walk. Somebody has to eat from what you are working for. That don't mean because you are gain that person is poor, but that's how God wants it to be in some of their lives. So if God can be able to do all these things, he's asking us, all I need from you is in the morning when you wake up, call upon me. Call upon me when you wake up in the morning. That's all I want. 
call upon me. You pray in the morning when you wake up. Call upon him. Thank him for waking you up in the morning. Father Lord, I'm grateful because I'm able to see this day today. I'm thankful for the, for the life of my family. My loved ones, my neighbor. I commit my life, my, my travel masses, my travel life into your hands. Give me travel masses as I go, as my family go. Go before us and come after us. It talks in, in the book of Deuteronomy. It says, when you abide, you follow this commandment. I will fight your battle. I will go with you when you go. I will come back with you. But when you don't abide, many other things fall into that Deuteronomy 28. So when many things befall others, you don't know the reason you don't want to judge. You want to sit back and look whether that person is living the right way of God or not. That's why it's not good for us to judge. If we can help others to see the other side of God, we help. So when you abide, you try, you keep his commandments, you wake up in the morning, say, seek me first, everything else will be added. When you say, seek me, seek God, you wake up in the morning, go to devotion. Look for an altar in your house. Make your room an altar. It can be your bathroom. You wake up, you go in your bathroom. You praise God in there. You pray. You shower. When you come out, you dress your out. He's going to be with you. Abide in his word when you wake up in the morning. That's number one. We need to apply God's word to our lives. Believe it or not. There's no one. If you are living a life that you are not applying God to your life, then you are enjoying for now. But the devil works short the devil don't work for long god work for long he give us time to to confess our sins he give us time to repent because he don't want all of us to perish that's why god want every one of us to be a repentant souls he don't want us to to, to perish so he give us long time to 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 go around our business to do whatever we want to do and, and come back to our senses and then confess but the devil don't have time for that. The devil is just giving you time, small time, for you to go too deep into his own. Then he lock that up. You cannot come out. It's difficult. And when you first to come out, many things will happen. And you don't want that. So God's words, we need it. We need to apply God's words to our daily activities, our life and the life of our children and our family. Even your job that you do. You have to apply God's words. I'm not saying go to work and preach the gospel. No. Take your work and put that work into the hands of God. Father, Lord, this is the job that you have blessed me. This is what put food on my table. I have given you this job. Secure it for me. Bless this job. Cover me among all the people that I'm, I'm, I'm among in my job. Cover me with your, with your mighty hands. Keep me in your bunker that whatever plans they are planning they will not be able to succeed. There is no job that we all works that you will not have one enemy there. One way or the other, somebody will like you. One way or the other, everybody will like you, but somebody will not like you. As long as we are human. Some people will just don't like you. They will say, I don't like the God of her. I don't like because she dressed too much. I don't like because she's pretty. I don't like... Somebody will not like you. That's why we need God in our life. Every day to stand on that solid foundation is to abide when you wake up in the morning, you call upon me first before you go out. That's our number one uh, 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 foundation. Number two, we need God's words in our life. We need to apply God's words in our lives, in the lives of our loved ones, just as I said, our family, the job that we do, everything, even before we get into our car. We, we have to say something. So the devil is aware that we know who is God. So if if you don't know that, believe it, you leave it. When you abide God's word in your life, you have to believe it. You have to leave it. You have to trust it. When you believe the word, you can't say, I'm living the life of God, but you don't believe it. Some people call God's name and they tell you, I don't even believe that there is a God. Yes, there is a God. So we have to live that life. We have to believe it. We have to trust it. We apply it and pray according to God's word. We have to believe it. We have to live it. We have to apply it. And then we are praying according to God's word. When we, when we continue to do that, you see how the manifestation of God starts unfolding in your own eyes, right in your home. 
You can't tell me you married you and your husband, you leave home and you don't pray. You do not fast. You open door for Satan, a stranger in your home, who come sit right there and then piping you and piping your husband to fight all day. And now he start putting the word divorce. But when you take God inside your home, when I mean take God, you call upon him daily, morning time you wake up, you commit your family. You the husband, you pray for your family. You the wife, you are praying mother and prayer wife. You put held hands together and put everything in the hands of God. Tell me if God will let you go. No, the devil will be trying, but God said no. This family, their life, their property, their job, their children, everything about them. They, have, they took everything, they placed it into my palm. They said, I should take care of them. I'm not going to let this family... In your hands, I will tell you the devil even bargain with God for all of us. If you guys don't know, we the born again, the devil bargain every day with God. He said, These people that you see, we see in the book of Job when the devil bargain with God and told God that Job is only worshiping you, praising you, and doing all these things because you bless him so much. He said, Take everything from Job, you will see if Job will worship you again, he will not even care about you. So they, they go and make a bet to God. And what they did, they took everything to Job, including his children. And so, even the wife, the devil was able to use the wife. That's why when we married, we need to, to, to marry the wife that God fears and that knows God. Because when the devil is coming to, to tempt you and tempt the wife at the same time, you guys are on the same, same stand, the same table, the same word. But if the devil comes to tempt the husband, he cannot. But to be able to tempt the wife, then there's a problem somewhere. So when, when the devil came, he told the wife, he said, tell, tell your husband to curse God. The wife told the husband, he said, curse God and die. But Job refused to listen. He continued to stand and abide in God's word. The God that blessed me before will still bless me. And prayed for his two friends. What God did? God blessed him even more than he had. This is the God we are talking about, the Almighty God. So if you have you took your family into the hands of God, you think the devil will just come and take the family out. A lot of things have happened to a lot of family. Maybe one child, God just take, maybe this. When you go ten, ten chances to one, there's something after that. But God is a God that is merciful. He can't just look and destroy a family just like that because of no reason. You, you dig into it, there's something that might you don't know or the people don't know it might be something that they have done way back before so when you take everything you, you entrust it into the hands of god you say you are my father you created me you put me on this world for a purpose i'm working on your purpose and now i am giving you myself my children my husband my job the job of my husband the home that i live and everything into your hands take control of us i tell you you will see what god will do he's going to take care of you so we have to apply to his word. We apply it and pray according to his word. We need to have faith in Jesus and in God's word. When we are standing in the foundation of God, we need faith is number one thing aspect in our life. We need to, because you can't just say, oh, there's a God. I don't even believe whether this is working. Everything that comes out of your mouth, you have to believe that it's going to work. You have to believe that this is going to work. You can't just say it and then you don't believe. So we have to have faith in our words. When we get up in the morning, we'll pray. If you are prophesying, I prophesy on my life that this will happen. I prophesy on the life of my husband and this will happen. Everything will come to pass. So that's how we start building our strong foundation. We start building our foundation by abiding into the words of God. Get up in the morning, you do morning devotion. Read the word to your family. Don't just do it, your husband is sleeping. A devotion consists the entire family. If your devotion, you go to bed, you pray with your family. Your first devotion in the morning, if you wake up, maybe by five or six, wake up the children within that time. You guys sit, read the word, share amongst them. That's like a morning breakfast. You share that word amongst them. They take that one with them to school. You take that one with you to work. Your husband take it. You guys go home. Get off for more, come back. Dinner and everything. Before goes to bed, you, you have your last night prayer as a family. That's how you start a solid foundation. And don't forget reading the word with your family. 
You take a day in the week. If it's Wednesday, if there's a Bible study, you take the children with you. If there's no Bible study, you home, you guys can share a, a, a day. Like when you guys come up, get up from work, time, everybody have time to do their own personal things. Within that time in the evening, you just share the word like Wednesday. Okay, before we go to bed, 9, 10 o'clock, let's share the word. You share the word. This is a solid foundation. Fasting is a solid foundation. Meditating on the word is a solid foundation. When you start that way and you stick to it, the devil will look at you and run away. So he said, out of being a strong foundation, whether we can clearly uh, understand them or not, people generally make decisions based on set of principles. We have to have a principle. This principle can stem from the way we see things and the way we, think, we see things in the world the way we see things in, in, in God's word. So as a, as, a, as a Christian business and professional, we find lots of principles. Number one, living a, a life of God. Let, let's look at this scripture, which is Matthew 7, 24 to 25. Matthew 7, 24 to 25. Let's look at 24. It says, Anyone who listens to my teaching and follow it is like a person who builds a house on a solid rock. Though the rain comes in terror and the flood water rise and the wings beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on a brick rock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish. Like a person who beats a house on stand, when the rain and the flood comes and the wings beat against the, that house, it will collapse with a mighty crush. So that's what um, this verse is telling us. When you build your, your, your life solid foundation, you have solid foundation, the devil will come and, and shake, but you will still stand, you will not be able to move. But when you build your, 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 your life in the things of the world, the devil is able to use you anyhow and do whatever the devil wants to do with you. There's nothing you can do. Because your foundation is not strong. We must hear the word of God. What we read should be going in our ears and out and will be other without making any meaningful impact on our mind and our hair. At times we hear the word of God. It comes here and comes to the other one and we never keep it. We must put the words of God into practice. When we hear it, we put it into practice. We may read about loving our neighbor, ourselves, but until we practice this in real life, we won't make any progress towards building a firm foundation based on the external truth of God's word. We can hear the word of God, but if we don't put it into practice, it's a waste of time. So it's the same thing. When you are building a strong foundation of God, what you hear in church, what the Bible says, you apply it, you do it. You can't tell me you hear God's word and then say love your neighbor, but you hate your neighbor. That's not a strong foundation. We have to listen or we, we have to listen. We read the truth. We cannot know truth unless we hear it. One of the most practical ways to consistently know the truth is to read or listen we have to read the word and listen to the word the bible daily the routine offer a beneficial ways to build a list lasting knowledge biblical principle so let's look at this why can't we read the bible once and move on well one character of human being is the, the way they, 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 they read the word or the way they do the things However, knowing and remembering God principle is it enough. We must also put into practice what we remember or what we read. We can only put into practice what we remember and what we read about the things of God. When you read the word of God, when you practice it, then you are, you are, you are, you are creating a strong foundation for yourself. Second, you practice biblical principle. We have to practice. Not only do we need to hear the words of God, 
and upstart them into our thoughts, into our process. We must put them into practice as we live our biblical life principle in our lives our foundation will be strong when you live biblically your foundation strong you read the word you practice it you apply it in your life in the lives of your family and once it's part of you your children are able to apply that to even their friends like if somebody don't like somebody when you teach them to love one another to love the neighbor they take that you apply it you show them you do it. It's not only to say it. You apply it to show it. You do it. When when the children see sees what you do, openly, they will go to do the same thing to their friend. If somebody says, I hate this, but the Bible says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. So now what you are doing, you are transferring that to your children, to your family. They will transfer it out there. These are what we are saying. When you practice them, you show it them. He said, hearing truth and putting it into practice, create a foundation built on the strongest rock. When you hear the word, you put it into practice. You have, you have, you have created a foundation on a solid rock. On that will hold up a house in, in, in whatever weather, whether the worst weather, it will not be able to move because you know God's word. The devil will not be able to move you. God is that rock. You are building the house of your life on a sleepless sand of your own reasoning. You are building it firmly on the rock of God's truth. When you believe the truth, you stand on the truth, you share the truth, whatever the truth will set you free. When you stand, you have built your truth solidly on the rock of God. Now you reflect reflection and studying of the word there are so many biblical word biblical bible biblical word to study you when you study the bible you reflect on upon it and apply it into your life in the lives of your family you have built a strong foundation add this to to all this you meditate the word you meditate the word the word on the word of god each day when you wake up you read one bible you meditate on it before you go to work. An excellent place to start when looking for biblical principle is the book of Proverbs. When you look at the book of Proverbs, each chapter is chock full of sound principle. We all know that for wise living. Let's look at Proverbs 11, 3, what it says. Proverbs 11, 3, what it says. Proverbs 11 3 says, Honestly guides good people, dishonestly destroy tenderous people. Honesty guides good people. When you are honest, it guides good people. Dishonest destroy tenderous people. That's what it says. The integrity of the upright guides them. But the unfaithfulness are destroyed by their disability city. So this is different ones that I'm reading. The integrity of the upright guides them, but the crookedness of the tenderness destroy them. So these are different, different books I'm reading. So when you look at the proverb, it said, seek cancer, plan fail for lack of cancer, but with many advisors, they succeed. Then this other one, eleven three says, destroyed by their what? By their ways. So let's look at Proverbs 15. I just get that. What it says in different word. Proverbs 15, 22. Proverbs 15, 22. What it says. It says, without cancel, plan fail. Without you don't have cancel. Your plan fail, but with many advisors, they succeed. When you don't have counsel, you fail. But when you have many advisors, you succeed. There will be one that will come, or maybe with many, you have 10 of them advising you. Maybe six of them came with the same thing, and with six of them, you succeed. 
So that's why when you don't have counsel, many things will fail. Let's look at what James 1 5 says. James 1 5, what it says. James 1 5 says, If any one of you lack wisdom, let him ask God, who will give generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. It will be given him. So, when you want to, but if you lack wisdom, it say, ask God, who will give generously and without reproach, it will be given to them. All these, we have to seek counsel from God if we want to really do something for ourselves. Our own understanding is not enough, but we link our understanding to the things of God. You can read the word of God, you can meditate it and many other things. You will see wisdom start coming. God is able to speak through the Holy Spirit to us. So, when we talk of building your life on a solid foundation, on God's words, emotion, some build their lives on feeling. If it is feel right, they do it. Some people don't, don't build their foundation on the things of God. Some people, when they feel right, they do it. But feeling lie. At times, our feeling lies to us. You can say, oh, I love this man. He looks cute. I love him. My heart says he's my husband. But you did not ask God. Did you pray? Did you start on a solid foundation? Do you know whether this man is a Christian or reverence God? Do you know if this woman reverence God? Did you pray? Did you ask God whether this is your man? But based on your feeling, you work on it. But we have to stand on that solid foundation. Our feeling lie all the time to us, but we don't know. You lie to yourself more than anyone else because it's your feeling. If you live by your feeling, you spend your life manipulating by your own mood. Some people, they always deny what God blessed them. Say, no, this is not what my mind told me. This is, or this is this. So our feeling lie to us. But when we want to build our foundation is we start with a solid ground by praying and listening to what God says. He said, if it doesn't work to build your life on popular culture, tradition, reason, or emotion, what should we build your life upon? The only thing you can build your life upon is God's words. Let's look at what we already see what Matthew 24, 7, 24 says. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mind and put them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The solid rock is the word of God. When we hear the word of God, we apply it, we do it. You will see how God's words will manifest in your life. Every single day we are constructing our lives. With each decision we make, those, inten this, those intentional and those not, we are putting down, building, we are building blocks in our lives. Blocks we built upon again to know. So, these blocks consist of so many everyday things. The word we say, the things we read, the story we tell, the show we watch, the songs we listen to. The songs we listen to simply everyday act. So this means building needs to begin with a solid foundation. So everybody knows need to know building needs to start with solid foundation. The type of foundation that you that hold, that will hold up when life is good and when life is not. When you stand on the foundation, the solid foundation of God, when life is bad. The Bible it teaches you how to be courageous. When life is not good, the Bible teaches you how to be courageous. So when you fall, you know where to go. The Bible will tell you when you fall, how to get up. When you get up, the Bible will tell you when you fall, what will happen. So you that strong foundation will be there. If even something happens, you are able to be couraged by the word of God because the word of God is there. You are able to courage through these words. Let's look at what Luke 6, 48 says. Luke 6, 48. Luke 6, 48. He said, 
He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when a flood arose, the stem broke against that house and could not shake it because it had built well. It had been built well, well built. But the one who hears and does not do them is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. When the stem broke against it, immediately it fell, and then destruction of that house was great. So, so building your home in a solid foundation, this consists your marriage, your job, your children, and everything you do. The way you lay your foundation, how you start your home, is how these children will grow up. Whatever they see you do, that's what they do. They will grow up with that. At times, it can be a difficult for you to start. But once you are there, everybody will adapt to it, even job. He said, this is why we, we built, we emulate the person Jesus described. A man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when the flow arose, the stem broke against that house and could not shake it because it had been well built. Let build a firm foundation in our home, in our family, in the life of our children, in the life of our own. And start building a foundation on God's word. Begin your day with the Lord. If you get up in the morning and just, I don't know how I will feel or how you feel. Get up in the morning, just start and start, start car and start going or get up in the morning and just start going without even applying the word of God in your life or even your family. For me, the day will start dawn. I, will, I will always think that there's something that is wrong somewhere. So it's difficult for me when I know that I have a phobia in that. I get up in the morning, just go. I come back. I will stay in my car. I pray. I cannot move like that. It's like something is telling me, ain't you forgetting something? You just live in. Did, did you pray this morning? So it's something like a phobia to me that it's something that I cannot handle. I have to pray. No matter what the situation is, I have to pray. I have to pray. So when we look at Psalm 63 1, what is say, Oh God, you are my God. Only will I seek you. My soul test for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. Your soul. There isn't anything that makes spending time with the Lord in the morning. There is, is, isn't any time. There isn't anything that makes spending time with the Lord in the morning more spiritual than any other time of the day. It does. However, Set an intention for the way our building will go day after day. That's number one. We have to, when we start that, we have to seek the Lord every morning when you wake up. Begin your day with the Lord. Seek the Holy Spirit. Building plans. You seek the Holy Spirit. Let's look what Psalm 127 1 says. As we spend time with him, ask the Lord to do his building through us. Instead, of us doing what we think is right and best. Let's ask the Holy Spirit. Seek the Holy Spirit's building plans. Always seek. Holy Spirit, I'm up. I'm looking for this. What can I do today? Direct me, lead me. Let the Holy Spirit do the working. Many of us begin our day with our, our to-do list. And uh, we set on what, when, and how we will go about it. But scripture tells us, unless the Lord be lay house, the work of the builder is wasted. So when I start my day, I don't go about my own thing. When I get up, Holy Spirit, I'm up. This is what I want to do. Lead me. If I'm going in a meeting, I always ask the Holy Spirit, I'm going in a meeting, go in there and go ahead. I always say, go ahead of me in that meeting. Speak for me when you get there. So you start your day, not by your own understanding, but the understanding of God. But a lot of people start their day based on what they understand or how they have a long list. You can have that list. You write that list. I don't know how to write this. Some people, they have to write a list to go the list before they're able to know what to do or how to do it. For me, when I get up, I'm just going. I'm like a rock woman. I'm out. When the Holy Spirit, when I get to where, when I start talking, the Holy Spirit remind me, the memory starts coming and I start remembering that I have this, I have this. I don't know how to do this. So some people believe in that list. 
but you, you can believe in the Holy Spirit to lead you in, in many things that you are doing. The Holy Spirit is able to lead you to do these things. Number three, source the, the right tools. The right tools, what we understand. We are going to look in the book of um, Philippians 4, 8. It says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirably, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about short things. What we think determine our behavior. The right tools for building well begins with thinking right. You have to get up, think right. That's why it said, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is ad admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about short things. So, first of all, to start a to start building a solid foundation on, on God's word, what we think determines our behavior. The right tools for building well begins with the right thinking. You can think positively, not negatively. A lot of people think negatively all the time. Your first thought is positively. I'm going to build this, and this is how I want it. By the grace of God. On this, this way, don't say if, if you fall now, I don't know, maybe it's work. No, always have a positive right thinking. Your right thinking, thinking about what is true, thinking about what is noble, thinking about what is right, thinking about what is pure, thinking about what is lovely, what is ad admirably, thinking about what is excellent, thinking about what is praiseworthy. We have to have positive thinking at all times. Stack the right material. When you want to start your solid foundation in the things of God, you want to start with the right material. We already know fasting, early morning prayer. You have to fast, learn that. You have to pray. You have to do so many things to make you. So what Apostle Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 3, 9, chapter 3, verses 9 to 11. He said, for we are both God's worker. And, and you are God's field. You are God's building. Because of God's grace to me, I have laid the foundation like an expert builder. Now, others are building on it. But whoever is building on this foundation must be very careful. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one we already have. Jesus Christ. So Apostle Paul tells us that we are God's building we are god's building us because we represented god himself because god created us in his own image so we that are sitting here are god's building that's why they say this our body is the temple of god we should not be doing anything because we are an image from god so we are already god's building we are a foundation of god we are god's building so we are representing God himself. He cannot come down to represent us. He cannot come down to do all what he wanted us to do. That's why you see God creates me. Say, okay, you will be a preacher. Preach the word of God. I cannot come to do this. He delegates every task to all of us. The pastors, the prophets, the, the evangelism, the, the, those, the ministers, those who sing, the ushers. So God in his kingdom, everybody have a role to play. We are his foundation. We are the builder. So, Apostle Paul tells us, we are God's building. The we are God's building. Because we represent God himself, we must be very careful to only build what lines up with God himself or Jesus. So, we need to be very careful and align with only what, what builds with God, what connects with God, what line up with God. We have to very be careful. That's why the, the, the word tells us, the, the reading tells us, but whoever is building on this foundation must be very careful. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one God already laid on us. So we are the building of God. We have to very be careful the things we do. Our body is the body, the body, the temple of God. What we do reflects on us. And we are God's building. Our body entirely is God's building. We need to very be careful how we use this body, what we do. And when we are doing, we careful how we lay our foundation. You cannot lay a foundation in the in the world. Your foundation lays on God's word. When you lay your foundation in the world, you will see. So step 
back and you inviolate yourself. Let's look what Psalm 139, 23 and 24 says. Psalm 139, 23 and 24, what it says. It says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thought. And see if there, is, there be any grievous ways in me. And lead me in the way, and lead me in the way everlasting. It said, God should search me. In the business of life, we can get caught in the work of daily living and forget to take time to reflect on God's word. As a carpenter, as a builder, as whatever you are, stop to examine his work. You must step back at times and look at yours. If you are doctor, you are lawyers or in all these areas, stop back and look and examine your work. So you must step back at times and look at ours. We step back and look. Search me, O oh Lord. So, we have to understand what the word is telling us. There's so much that we have to. So he says, stand firm in his word. You have this, you have this passage that tells you God is all we have. In second, he said, God, in 2 Timothy 2 19, say, but God firm foundation stand by bearing this seal. The Lord knows those who are his. He knows who I is, and let everyone who name who names the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. When you want to lay strong foundation, God knows His people. He knows who they are. Jesus is our firm foundation. First Corinthians three eleven. He says, "As no one can ever lay any other real foundation than that one we already have, Jesus Christ. Build your life on Jesus, the only source." only foundation we read matthew 24 27 about the foundation so everyone who hears this or want to build our world we read about matthew when you look at isaiah 20 28 16 it said therefore this is what god's sovereign lord says look i am placing a foundation stone in jerusalem a firm and tested stone it is a precious cornerstone that is safe to build on Whatever believe, whoever believes need never be shaken. And you believe you will never be shaken. Jeremiah 29, he said, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Let's look what Luke 6, 47, 6, 47, 49. Everyone who comes to me and hears my words and does them, I will show you what he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when a flood arose, the stem broke against that house and could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who hears and does not do them is like a man who built a house on the stem, on the ground without a foundation. When the stem broke against it, immediately it fell, and the, and the urine of that house was great. So everyone who hears, my, hears me Everyone who comes to me and hears my word does them. I will show you what it is like. When you hear God's word and you do it, you will see what God will do for you. Matthew 16, 18. He said, I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church. And the gate of hell shall not prevail against it. You say that the gate of hell shall not prevail against your life. 1 Corinthians 3, 13, 15. Each one's work will become manifest. For the day will disclose it because it will reveal by fire. And the fire will test what sort of work each has done. If the work that anyone has built on this foundation 
survives, you will receive a reward. If anyone walks burnt up, you will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, but only as though fire. What you do is what you will receive. Ephesians 2, 19, 22. So then you no longer strangers and align, but you are fellow, fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles, the prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure being joined together go into holy temple in the Lord, in him you also have been built together in a dwelling place for God by spirit. So let's see what Apostle, uh, First Peter says 2, 4, 6 As you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen and precious you yourself live like living stone are being built up as a spiritual house. To be a only priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifice accepted to God through Jesus Christ, for it stand in scripture, behold, I am laying a Zion, in Zion a stone, a cornerstone choose and precious, and whoever believes in him will not put to shame. Amen. So those who believe when you want to stand in strong foundation, we already know. Standing in strong foundation, we have we started the story. We see where the many, many other things that we have to do to make a strong foundation. So as I'm coming to the end of today's preaching, I just want every one of us. If you have not started yet, it's not late. You can start today. Because nobody don't want to live a life wherein you are worrisome, you are struggling, there are so many challenges. You sit down all day thinking far because you make the wrong decision. We can make the right decision when we found ourselves where there's nothing we can live without God. Nobody can live. If you are living your life every day without God in it, your family in it, your job in it, you are just living a worthless life because at the end of the day, there is a reward. And that price, you might not be part of it. That reward, you might not be part of it. So when you want to leave that strong foundation, solid, it's just like the, 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 the builder, as we, as we are told in the scripture, the builder that built his foundation in a solid rock. When the rain came, when the rain came, what happened? That particular builder, that foundation was stand, but you that build your own on the sand, when that particular foundation came, what that's, when the rain came, it took your foundation. You have to build yourself in the things of God, in the kingdom of God. No matter where you found yourself, if you are in a ministry, look for something that you can hold to, to that ministry. If you can be a leader, look for that. If, I, if you can sing, look for that. If whatever you can do in that ministry to make it strong in the presence of God, do but the things of the things of the world have took so many souls away we worry too much about the things of the world that's why people are worried too much you won't do what the next person is doing you won't do we have so many people that they will they will they will do so many things on their faces you are not happy of who you are god created you who you are god look at you and look at you well in your mother's womb and create you say this is who i want you to be when you are born now you either make yourself lighter or you, your entire face you are not happy some people said i'm not happy with my face they will change their entire face and do something else different what god what how god creates them how can you do to stand when you you know how many people come back to repent for that Yes, God is a, is a father that forgives. But how can you even stand that after you have disfigured your face? If, even, if you are getting old, you are getting old. All you cannot take from yourself. That shows that the grace of God is upon you. You turn 50, the grace of God. You turn 55, it's the grace of God. Continue living that. Even you have gray hair, show off with that gray hair. For everybody to know that the grace of God is keeping me daily. I'm living, I have all this gray hair. But some people, when they see that one, they change it. Say, no, I still want to continue to be young. When the age is there, if you are 50, 60, you cannot take that age back to 20. Continue to live the grace of God. Some people will go and 
do something on their cheek so that the cheek will go high because I'm getting old. You will do, do, do what God has created you to be. No matter how you do, the face will still wrinkle. The neck will wrinkle. Something will wrinkle because you are getting old. You are not happy that the grace of God is taking you a day at a time. But when you don't build your foundation in the things of God, some things when you look at them, but when you build a strong foundation, you know God. Even when you are getting old, you say, by the grace of God, I thank God. You are living life. Some people are going with age, but you see them young every day. It's the grace of God. We still encourage, we still accept that. So we, I want to encourage everyone, even your marriage should build in the foundation of God. Your job built. You, everything you do should start with the foundation of God. When you start that in your home, you take it everywhere. When you have that foundation, God is everywhere you are. God will be with you everywhere. Sorrow cannot be your problem. You cannot be sorrow because God is ready to work with you and solve your problem. So I want everyone today, if it is late, no matter what your age, you can start today. Start building your foundation with God. When you start in the morning, get up and pray. Your first foundation is to pray. In the week, look in the week, twice inside the week, fast. You can take Monday, say today, Monday, I'm just giving myself, I'm fasting. Fast, commit your life to God, pray. Speak to God, have conversation. Meditate the word in the week, meditate the word. Learn to do devotion with your family. Commit all to God and all now God will take care of it. But we don't believe in that. The things of the world, when we go, we get, people don't believe. We say, ah, I don't believe. I don't have time. You guys pray too long. You guys stand to pray too long. You guys stand to, to fast. I don't have time. I have my busy schedule. I have to work. That stand that we are standing, it pay off. There will be a time you don't, you don't even stand long. You just stand one time. Then your prayer is hard. You move on. God, you see things start manifesting. People start saying, why everything work for you? You're not the only one here. But you've been standing, praying years to come. You have been calling upon God's name many, many times. Now, when you stand, you don't even stand too long. God answer you. But those who were running, oh, I don't have time to pray. No time to stand. No time to meditate the word. You are running because everything is coming. Then one, just one day, a big rain come. Just one day, a storm. Take everything away. You cannot go back to make it. You are late. You cannot make what gone. You have gone with age. Then now you start looking and say, I suffer all my age, 30 years, to make all this just one day gone because your foundation was not strong. Your foundation was not strong. But when you built a strong foundation, you can do it 10 years. Then God, God is ready to, to even cover every every cost of it 10 years you standing praying you 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 in you in altar praying crying to god asking god how to show you this god show you one day and everything manifest unfold and you make effort of it the devil will come everything will come but you will still stand strong you will go 50 years generation will come and enjoy that benefit but you that are running after the world, you don't care about the things of God. You have not led your foundation strong in the presence of God. One day you, God is a merciful God. He give you a chance to come and repent. He wants all of us to repent. He don't want us to perish. But he will give you a chance if you don't. You keep running after the world. Doing dupe people for their money. Not standing on solid foundation. Don't care. You are duping. You are taking. You are lying. You are doing so many things. Stealing from people. He will watch you. The devil knows how to do all these things. God don't. The devil will watch you. Say, go still. Don't worry about God things. You will go and lay all those foundations of the world. You gather everything. You see now you are billionaire. The people are calling your name. You see a storm from nowhere just come. Crush everything. You will cry. All the people you have steal from. All the people you have lied to. All the people you took from. You stole so many from others. People have placed costs on you. And the Bible said those who bless, you bless them. Those who cost, you cost them. Somebody have placed costs on you. So many things. All those uh, um, things that you have done. People have been crying, praying to God for you alone. One crush, everything go down. Now you are 60. You can't go back on 60 something. You cannot go back to start looking for where to get. Because that's the life you used to. You don't know how to start. Now you are running to God. Father Lord. You give your life to Christ. It's a merciful God and you forgive. But if you reach to a point now where in you are running, some people, the devil look at them and, and, and gauge, gauge them. He said, this I know. Once you are four, you are running to go to church. I know what to do. Immediately you get up to go to church, the devil kill you. So you don't get way to, to confess. Because the devil knows your last bet is to go confess to God. God will forgive you and start you all over. 
So the devil is a cunning man. He knows how to cage us. When he cage you, he knows that you cannot come out again to confess. You will want to confess. So when he cage you, if he knows you will want to church, he will kill you right there. He will make something bad happen to you. So now that you know that the devil is a corny man, don't give the devil a chance. Lay a foundation for your children. When you are not there, they will stand on that foundation. Lay a foundation for yourself. Even when you are tired, those prayers will cover up. Lay a foundation so your generation will come, they will enjoy. Lay a foundation for your entire family, your husband, your children. So you, they will not suffer in the long run. So this is my only encouragement today. The Holy Spirit spoke. He said, speak on how to lay a solid foundation. We already know prayer is part of it. Fasting is fast part of it. Meditating the word of God is part of it. And there are so many scriptures. You can go back and read and, and play the, replay the video and listen to it and see some Bible verses that I have outlined. Read those Bible verses. See how you can start your foundation. I told you already, number one, when you wake up in the morning, do not just run out of your house. Commit all to God. If you have a troublesome wife, a troublesome husband that cannot listen, they are out. All you know, prayer works. Pray to God. Prayer works. It might not work now, but it works. The things of the world is too much. When you do too much, you will do. It don't last. But that prayer will last forever. Prayer works for me. He has worked for me. He's working for me every day. It will work for you. So let's start our foundation. Number one, early in the morning, start your foundation by talking to God and God's word. And don't forget to commit your family. As you continue to be so, do so, it shall be well with you. These words are not my word, but a lot of them are from the Bible verses. I just add some words that to just make sure everybody able to understand the solid foundation. And I encourage you, if you are down on earth, you are down, maybe something is bothering you, you have challenges, you have stresses, look on the other side of God. Start um, laying your foundation and see what God will do for you. As you start that, you see how many things will manifest. I thank everyone for stopping by today. Benny Steven, thanks, sis, for joining. Grace, gracious, thank you for joining. Thank you again once more, Edwin, for joining. And everyone that is today in this forum, your coming will not go in vain. Share the video, listen, go back and listen to the words. Write some scriptures, read them yourself, how you can start a solid foundation in your life and the life of your family. As you continue to do so, it shall be well with you. God bless all of, all of us today. So, as we have listened to this, do not only be a hearer of the word, I encourage you to be a doer as well. God's words is a daily thing. We will continue to do God's words. We will see how God's, God's things, when we do God's words, we will see how many things will manifest or unfold. Great things that we have been waiting for will manifest. Great things will unfold. You cannot do God work and everything go in vain. Those who do God work too much, he do for us too much. He might not be doing what we want, but what he knows that we need, he's doing that. And I thank God for that. So start doing now. It's not late. And I want to encourage all those who are struggling with God's word, those who are struggling in what to do, I want to surrender myself today. I'm going to read a prayer with you that you'll be able to surrender your life to Christ. And that's the beginning of your solid work. Those who don't know Christ, you can surrender your life today to Christ by praying this prayer with me. Immediately we're done. Look for a Bible-believing church. First solid foundation for you is to surrender your life to Christ. Then we can take it from there. He said, Lord, I confess my sin. And ask for, for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Take complete control of my life. And help me to walk in your footsteps daily by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and for answering my prayer. Once you have, once you have read this with me, look for a Bible-believing church. Go there and surrender all to Christ. It shall be well with you. Remember, the Bible is not like a novel. That you can put your foot up and read. The Bible needs consistency to lay that foundation. You have to read the word. You have to meditate it. You have to follow everything in it. So that what will happen, you will be prosperous in life. You follow everything. That's what Joshua, in the book of Joshua. He said you have to read the word. 
you meditate it day and night, you follow what is written in it, so your days will be prosperous. So read the word of God. It's not easy. Getting the Bible verse, reading them, is not something that is easy. But as you continue to read, God will start speaking to you. You see many things start unfolding. You will see many things start happening in your life. So we need to link on God's understanding. I want, if you are struggling, you cannot just go to bed, you read the word of God. They say tomorrow, God help me. You need to link on it. A lot of us, I will make example to myself, sitting here today, it didn't start today. It starts since I was young. But I make a lot of wrong choices when I was coming up. But God said, no, I want you to work for me. And God put me to the right path. I give all to God. I surrender my life to Christ. And then Christ, God accepts me and show me and unfold all the goodness he has for me. And say, my daughter, this is what I want to, you to do. So no one is late to be in his presence. No one is late to ask him. No one is late to speak to him. He's there to listen, to hear our cry. He's ready to be with us. So go there, surrender your life, and it shall be well with you. That's your first foundation. So I want to wish everyone happy birthday. April today, the first, they say April Fool. Happy birthday to all of you that are celebrating your birthday today. More wins, more soul. If you have not given your life to Christ, I encourage you today, the first of April. Go and surrender your life to Christ. It shall be well with you. I pray for speed. I pray for new height. I pray for new development. I pray for breakthrough in your life. I pray for many, many more birthdays to come. Then God will bless your way as you go through. Happy birthday. God bless you. So we have come to today's end of um, um, today's end of this, this um, uh, Bible studies. I want to encourage all of you to please subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Pastor Rosemary Benjamin James. Go there and subscribe to the channel. Touch the likes and the notification button. Whenever I upload a video, you'll be the first to receive. Thank you everyone that comes every Saturday to join this forum. God will richly bless you. You don't know what you are doing, but your time will come that you will tell yourself, my coming to this forum was not in vain. There's many, many blessings that will manifest in your life. I thank everyone today for joining today. God bless. I do you see, I know my spiritual father, you are not here today, but God bless you wherever you are. So let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this great day. I thank you for bringing us together to share your word. Father, Lord, I commit the servant of God as I am done preaching. Lord, cover me with the precious blood of Jesus and cover everyone that is here today. I pray we are, they are not going to only be a hearer of the word, but a doer. Bless everyone that is here today and their family. Those who are struggling to lay foundation, Father, meet them at the point of their needs and show them the ways how to lay this foundation, this solid foundation about the word of God. Father, Lord, bless their work, bless their children, bless their life. I commit everything today into your hands. And Lord, you alone can do what no man can do. I thank you because you are God. I thank you for the one in April. I thank you for all that you have done. I commit my elder sister's birthday is the second of April. Father, Lord, wherever she is, bless her. Have your way in her life. Cover her. More wins, more age. Give her more, more life to come ahead of her. Bless her children and all that she lays her hands may us succeed. I pray for everyone again that are celebrating their birthday. Happy birthday to all of you. May God bless you. Father Lord, I thank you for this great day. Continue to bless this April month. Make this April month a great month for every one of us. I thank you for all that you have done and what you are about to do. I pray for those who are praying for a, a husband and a wife that reverence you. Let your will be done. I pray for those who are praying for the foot of the womb as you did for Anna, as you did for Sarah. Do for them in the name of Jesus. I pray for children worldwide. Lord, I commit children and the vulnerable ones into your hands that Lord, your will will be done in their lives. They will not see no violence. Violence will not see them. They will not die by gunshot. Gunshot will not see them in the name of Jesus. I pray we will not die prematurely. We will not die untimely. We will not die by accident, by atrocity, by gunshot. Sickness, illness, or disease will not kill us. Father Lord, I pray today everyone that is going through chemotherapy, Father Lord, I, I pray that they will go through that chemo and come out. I pray against cancer. I pray against diabetes. I pray against kidney problem. I pray against migraine. And every deadly sickness that is not of you, I come against it today in the name of Jesus. Whatever we have eaten in dreams, spiritually and physically, will not harm us. 
I pray wherever we step, we step there at the right time, the right day. May the grace of God, may the power of God, may the anointing of God, may the protection of God be upon us all our days on this earth. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, so shall it be. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us share the grace, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely God, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. So, as we have come to the end of today's um, prayer, I want to encourage everyone to please Join us tomorrow 10 a.m. for our Sunday service. As you continue to join this forum, you shall be blessed. God bless you. Miss Stephen, I will text you on the channel. God bless you.